I made a previous video on Combat Width Meta. There's a few issues with his calculations and Combat Width could be optimized even further. And he basically says the difference between mine and his math is mostly two things. No squaring of overstacking width penalties and including overstacking of divisions. So basically he's taken into account the previous math from before and he's basically taken into account these two new breakthroughs so this is the meta of combat width again that's right combat with meta part two and we've had a few people scrutinize him in the reddit comments because that's really important guys you might have an idea you might have a theory but you've got to kind of write a paper on it and you can need people to scrutinize your maths to find out if what you have created is a new breakthrough and it appears from scrutiny of the reddit community that he has actually discovered a new meta for combat width. First thing I want to make you aware, I'm going to set your expectations. It's so much different to what the previous guy did, but there are a few tweaks that are important to find out. There's also a big breakthrough at the end of this video that I will get to. So if you sit tight and get your bum on your chair, let me explain some of the math and show you the cool numbers. I'll explain to you at the very end my big conclusion. This will blow your mind. So first of all, let's look at the graph here. So it basically shows combat width modifiers with terrain weights. So taking into account the terrain weights, the average effectiveness of division size. So as you can see here, if we take into account terrain, 15 combat width is superior. Do you think that's really interesting? And then we've also got 10 width. It's pretty good. We also have 16, 17, 18 here. 18 is looking pretty strong too. And then there's like a big valley in the center where there's not a lot going on. And then we have a big improvement at 44, 45. And then at 45, there is a massive valley of you do not go here you shall not pass and of course it applies to a similar degree at about eight width too is that so that's 10 would that be nine so apparently nine is very similar to 10 in effectiveness remember this is taking into account terrain as well don't forget that now in a perfect world where terrain is taken out of the equation then we end up with this and as you can see 10 width is the superior width and it kind of is okay until we get to around about 17, 18, and then it falls off and then it builds up again. At the very end, around about the, the 42, 43, 44, 45. Does that make sense? Are we all on the same page here? Are we, have we fallen to sleep yet? No, yes, no, maybe. So you can clearly see that 15, 18, 44, and 45 performed the best, with 10, 13, and 23 not far behind. The reason I include both 44 and 45, but not 18 in the TLDR, is that 15 performs 2.3% better weighted and 2.8% better in the unweighted than the 18. 44 and 45 offer a 0.8% in weighted and 1.7 in unweighted with them actually changing who performs better. That means the difference is a lot smaller. In an optimal world, there is no point in choosing something performs over 2% worse. So the big breakthrough here, another breakthrough, is the 10 width is no longer performing other widths. So this exception that 10 widths fits into everything or is the closest fit was actually misinformation. It's wrong. Previous models show that 10 width should be the meta but many exclude overstacking divisions it should also often show that 27 performs well but it isn't as good as it used to be the model is is open source so you can case anyone can create you can feel free to change at any point gives a breakdown here of land penalties we also have a python script as well so i think we can we could download this and actually recreate these uh, different scenarios depending on what terrain you are actually going to be at let, let me just give a, a few conclusions from this okay first of all people who used to obsess about 27 widths can say that the widths that are in the 20s and 30s tend to be less effective than the ones less than 20 and the ones that go up towards 40. That's something we can conclude. So there is kind of like a, a valley in the middle, right in the middle. You don't gain a great deal. However, the big takeaway from this is when you tend to play Hoy, you kind of start with a small division and you start to add more and more and more to it as you gain more XP. So technically you're always around 15 to 20 at the start of the game because that's what the game kind of gives you. And as you progress through the game, you'll start adding two width, two width, three width, depending on what division battalions you're adding on, until you get to the most optimal width, which usually are around, uh, in this case, 42, 43, 44, 45. They're the most optimal ones. Remember, though, very important, remember, if you're making an infantry to fill out the front line, you don't want to be going for really big divisions. You probably want to stay around about, is it 22, 23 here? Because those ones are an optimal size to fill out the front line. Remember, you don't want a thin front line, you want a thick front line with lots of divisions, so you've got flexibility 
if someone makes breakthroughs, for instance. So optimally, you want a small width. When it comes down to very large divisions, though, attacking divisions, you want to move in towards these optimal grounds of 42, 43, 44, 45, the optimal super sweet spots. I will admit, in my games, in most cases, I do end up not veering towards these big widths. But when you've got this as a reference in one corner of your eye, you can re remember to yourself that like 26, 27, 28 is really optimal, 29 is okay, and 30 is pretty good. So remember around here is your optimal middle ground. Here's my big conclusion to end this with. This is the big one, boys. This is the real big one. Are you ready for this? Are you sat down? The comments are going to get so mad. Are you ready to get so angry? Are you ready to get so angry? You've never been this angry before. If you make it a division between 10 width and 45, it just doesn't matter. In the old days, when you made a 10, 20, or a 40 width, you had to you could make them fit exactly into the combat width. So therefore, there wasn't a lot of uh, confusion over where was the, the least effective or most effective. It literally fitted in perfectly between 10, 20, and 40. So you just didn't have to worry. Once you got to 10, 20, or 40, it was a perfect fit, so you didn't need to worry about it. However, nothing fits now. Look, nothing says 100% at the top here. Nothing is 100%. Whatever you do, whatever combination, you will always have an overstacking penalty in some way, shape, and form. So I conclude, if you you made a whip between 10 and 45, you're good. You don't need to worry about it. Now, there are lots of arguments to be made that a 10 width is very small, so therefore it doesn't have a lot of stats. Agreed. A 45 width is very big, so it has supply problems. Think about it, though. Think about it, though. Think about it. You make the division, which is more convenient to where you're going to be fighting. I'll admit, 15 looks like a really good combat width, like a one battalion of artillery and the rest infantry for a frontline holding division. It looks like that. Or maybe one battalion of anti-air, for instance. That would be so strong. But overall, guys, Stop going on about combat width and getting so anal about how combat width has got to be perfect. At the end of the day, if you're making a combat width between 10 and 45, 15 and 45, you're doing all right. You're doing all right. Just be aware. There are some widths here that are actually really particularly bad. For instance, anything less than 10 and anything more than 45. And there seems to be a really awful value at 35 and 36. And also 25 and 26. That seem to be really awful as well. So just keep that at the back of your mind. 25, 26, 35, 36. They're pretty awful. And it's kind of reflected that when you look at the one without the terrain weights as well. So there is no bad combat with just ones that are too low and too high. Yeah, you've got it. That's the big brain moment. Don't get me wrong. Listen to me. Don't get me wrong. If you want to optimize combat width so you get the least overstacking penalty, feel free to follow these charts. But guys, don't get so anal about like getting the optimal combat width. If you're between 10 and 45, you gravy, boys. But if I could just conclude, it don't matter. However, if you're making an infant infantry division to hold a long front line you probably want to aim smaller because therefore you don't have to supply as much equipment to it so therefore it's easy to hold the front line so we're thinking between 10 15 and 20 if you want to go for a bigger division you're heading between 30 to 45 because that's an attacking division for instance for tanks or an artillery based infantry think of that as a rule of thumb that's all you need to worry about garrisons combat width doesn't matter so don't worry about that combat width is irrelevant oh i didn't say that oh i didn't say that <laughs> I didn't say that. A lot of the time in most games, you can't just say, I'll go for 15 for infantry and 45 for tanks. Why? Because a lot of time you need XP to make the division bigger. And a lot of the time that comes over time from fighting battles. You fight battles, you gain XP. Therefore, you can make the division bigger. A lot of time you'll be fighting with an ineffective division at some point because you'll be building on top of that existing division. Or maybe you've not got enough equipment. Even you're lacking tanks. So you don't want to make the division bigger if you've not got the tanks to fulfill the division. So always work with what you've got. Think to yourself, is it an optimal combat with? No. Or maybe I'll wait for the 5 XP and I have 10 XP and add two battalions on. So therefore, I can actually have a more optimal combat with. But do I have the equipment to actually upgrade that division to make it bigger? No, I don't. So in that case, maybe I want to wait for, until I produce the tanks to make that division bigger. Think about the game as you're playing it. Dynamically think as you're going through. Don't focus so much on combat with. Combat with doesn't matter as much as it used to. In the old days, it did. Combat with in the old days really did matter. In these days, unfortunately, it just doesn't matter as much as it used to. I think the number one thing to focus on is make sure your division has 100% strength and all the equipment attached to it. That's your number one, one, number one thing. Then think about making it bigger. Think about adding the equipment to it. Then think about going for a more optimal combat with. Think about getting the right technology for the best equipment. Think about making the most optimal tanks. There's a lot of things to think about other than going so anal about combat with, that's all. This video technically is part two.